Hello, humans, and welcome to another episode of Gen X Gamer. Today, let's talk about console defining games. That's right. <laughs> Guys, this is a, a series that I started because I, I think about certain games when I think about certain consoles, right? And, and games that made me enjoy the consoles even more, you know, after I purchased them. And, uh, you know, the, of course, it's subjective. It really is subjective, you know, to, to everybody. You know, your, your console-defining game is going to be different than mine. You know, and, and there's plenty of games for the Saturn that one can say are console-defining. Uh, you know, unfortunately for us in the U.S., most of them didn't come here. They're all in Japan. Because believe it or not, the Saturn was a lot more successful in Japan and got way better games than we ever did. But that's another story. But today I want to talk to you about Children of the Atom, right? And let me tell you how I fell in love with this game. Of course, you know, the game was out in the arcades, and it, and it was just a beautiful-looking game. It was at the time, you know, when the X-Men were out, comics were blowing up, man, and I was on, uh, into all of that. And, and uh, you know, as far as uh, comic book characters, the X-Men universe was my favorite universe. I, I loved it, you know, I loved the characters, Wolverine was my favorite. You know, I, I still have my old comics. And it was just a great time. And when I saw, okay, that b before even the game came out here, right, before the game even came out here, when I saw that you could order it from Japan, <laughs> you know, and, and um, I saw the stories on the magazines uh, about what the game looked like, about the gameplay, what, what I could do. It's all I could think about. I was just obsessed with it, you know. And unfortunately, at the time, I couldn't buy it, right? I couldn't buy it. I didn't. I didn't. Um, I didn't buy um, my Saturn until, you know, it had run its course. You know, I got and I, you know, made videos on this before. Got it for fifty bucks. Couldn't buy any games. You know, it was, it was a long time before I could get, um, you know, games for that system and enjoy it properly. However, the one that really captured me was X-Men, just because how well did it play, how well it played. I mean, if you, if you get the game, if you get the game from Japan, and you had to go through a lot. I mean, this was mail order stuff. You had to, you know, send in your check, <laughs> mail order it, and then just wait. <laughs> it could take two months, you know, whatever. When you were uh, ordering imported games, it, it could be like that, or you could order it for a lot higher price from somebody that already had it here in the U.S., you know, and uh, it, it could get pretty pricey, you know. And right now, I mean, the game is $100, right, With, without the RAM cart. Uh, you could buy it right now, right. And if you if you have that kind of money, and, and take in mind, guys, I mean, $100 is a lot of money. Um, uh, for me, anyway, and for most people, I would guess, out there. But most gamers my age are already empty nesters, you know. They're just game hoarding. <laughs> Of course, there's other ways to play the game. You could emulate it. You could, you know, play it on ROM, what have you. But there's something to playing that game and that system and watching that machine do what it was meant to do. Because the one thing about the Saturn is that it was always underrepresented here in the U.S., right? It, it was always underrepresented. Now, for those of you... <laughs> Who are new, right? Who don't know about this game and its release, right? Um, what I'm trying to do is I'm, you know, I'm putting up sort of the guidelines of the scripts here on the channel, and I post them in the community um, section. I think I'm going to promote those on Twitter or X, whatever the heck it's called, whenever I have time. And these days, I just don't really have that much time. But I really wanted to share this game with a lot of people, you know, especially if you're thinking about collecting, maybe you're getting into the Saturn and, and, you know, never heard of it or, you know, but who the heck hasn't heard of this game, right? But like I said, there's many ways to play it. One of my other favorite ways to play it is in one of these emulation machines and these arcade sticks that you get with a bunch of games on it. If you can get it on there, guys, play it. I'm telling you that the game is still tons of fun, you know, and um, you're really... 
uh, in for an experience if you've never played this game. If you're a fan of the comic books back then, let me tell you, you're going to enjoy the game. And let me tell you, in the annals of gaming history, right, of fighting gaming history, this is right up there. This is a gem that captures the essence of the classic Marvel comics and its most beloved franchises. You know, uh, X-Men Children of the Atom, for its time, really, really was, was desired and it was a wonder. I mean, no other release at that time could compare with Sega's release on the Saturn. I mean, just hands down, it was the closest thing to the arcade that you could find. It was just a marvelous co collaboration between Capcom and Marvel, right? And, and it really showed the expertise um, developed by Capcom at that time when it came to fighting games. X-Men Children of the Atom took the characters from the Marvel Universe and in 1994, they finally released it here in, in um, the U.S., I believe. And um, it, was, it was amazing. You know, everybody praised that game. I mean, even if people didn't like the Saturn, they had to recognize that this was a great game. It was an amazing game. The animation, the graphics, the combat system, everything was on point. At its core, X-Men Children of the Atom embraced the fast-paced, combo-centric gameplay that defined, for example, Street Fighter and other um, Capcom games of the era. Players could choose from a roster of the X-Men characters. And let me tell you, each possessed different uh, moves, like Wolverine's uh, Adamantium Claws, Cyclops Opti Optic Blast. And uh, the game really faithfully translated the powers of these characters into the game and really gave you a visceral experience. It was awesome. It was amazing. The characters would pop. And um, when X-Men made its way to the Saturn, it brought really the arcade experience home. And with a remarkable fidelity. The Saturn version showcased uh, more vibrant, more detailed capa uh, capabilities than any other system. And it really shined on the console. The transition from arcade to this console was almost seamless. Like you really had to look. When you sat down, <laughs> you know, you were really thinking about too, mu too much about it, especially if you had a good quality TV. There was, you know, you can find videos now and you can see the differences, but let me tell you, when you're playing the game, uh, they're ne negligible. I mean, they're, they're not gonna take away the experience for you. Now, here's the big question. Is it worth playing today, All right? Is it worth, is it worth uh, to you playing it today? Of course it is. It's still an amazing game. If you think about collecting, if you have that kind of budget, I said like, I know not everybody does, but if you do, if you own a Saturn, and instead of buying two mediocre games for 50 bucks, or if you're gonna play a modern game that you don't know if you're even gonna like for $100 nowadays, you know, you may wanna give this game a look, right? Even though it's what, <laughs> geez, 29 years old, and it's still amazing that, that to, it may, amazes me that I have to say these things like it, it was 29 years ago, it's 20 plus years ago. Oh man, how time flies by, but let me tell you, this game right here is timeless. So whether you're a fan of, X, of the X-Men universe, fighting games, or simply someone that wants to experience the magic of retro gaming at its purest on one of the... Uh, obscure consoles out there that nobody praised back in the day. People praise it now, right? People praise it now, but back in the day, there was very few of us who really loved the console. So if you have the money, if you have the resources, guys, and if you're collecting, this is a must-buy, at least for me. And for me, it's a game-defining uh, for this console. This game is, is defines the console of, of what the Saturn could do of its capabilities and what the console was really meant to do and what it's never allowed to go check out x-men children of the atom all right guys thank you for joining me i love making these man i love reminiscing and just talking about other stuff if you ever owned a saturn what is the console defining gaming for you let me know 
I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.